two teams, each team has to use it. Oh my god. Oh me, my bitch, why are you only shooting me, bitch? Amber! <laughs> He's saying, bitch, why are you only shooting me? <laughs> Welcome back to Kuro Tactics. Today, I'm making a video to highlight the new mode that was introduced in the Season 5 mid-season update, Ground War Reinforced. The previous clip was just something funny I had captured from a game of Warzone, and I wanted to share it before I forgot about it. In this video, I want to provide my review on this mode, discussing its strengths and weaknesses, along with potential tweaks that they can make to improve upon this mode further. I also wanted to discuss some generic loadouts and tactics that I have been having some success with. The video playing in the background is actually some highlights that I was able to capture while playing this mode. To start, let me first explain what this mode actually is. The Ground War Reinforced game mode plays out like a domination game where all players have a single life and can only be revived upon a capture of a neutral or enemy flag. If any of you have played the game called Insurgency or Insurgency Sandstorm, it's extremely similar to the Firefight mode. As far as I can tell, only about 5 Ground War maps seem to be available in this mode. There's Port of Verdansk, Promenade, Kravnik Farmland, Quarry, and Tavorsk's District. Because I'm not overly familiar with the original Ground War mode, because I absolutely hate it, I can't be sure if these maps are smaller or not. They certainly feel like they're a bit more restricted to accommodate the 16 vs 16 player count. So let's begin with what I think are the strengths of this mode. Overall, I much prefer this to the original Ground War. The One Life mode makes the killstreak spam a lot less prevalent and allows for gunfights to feel much more similar to a game of Search and Destroy than a game of Domination. Each kill you get feels more rewarding while you yourself hold on to that precious life knowing that your team might not be able to bring you back. While it is definitely slower than the original Ground War, the ability to revive team members does make the general games feel faster than the game of Warzone. Each match also lasts about 10 minutes with multiple rounds lasting a few minutes at best. The engagement distances also feel great. There's a mixture of long range gunfights along with close quarter combat in each of these maps. Perhaps due to the lower player count, snipers are not as annoying in this mode as they are in Ground War. People seem to use a variety of weapons for various distances in this mode, allowing for really great firefights if one is positioned accordingly. The ability to respawn your team is also extremely rewarding. Being the last member alive is a frantic feeling, especially when you're trying to solo cap a point by yourself. It makes for some very interesting gameplay moments. Vehicles also seem extremely balanced, with a lack of any sort of offensive vehicle being present. Besides the occasional killstreak, most deaths will occur from a gunfight, which in my opinion is definitely the way it should be. As a prior Battlefield player, for whatever reason this game mode definitely reminds me more of a slower Battlefield match than a frantic Call of Duty match. This is actually a really good thing, as it's a very refreshing mode to play compared to the normal multiplayer in Modern Warfare. Unfortunately, there are some glaring weaknesses to this mode as well. As fun as the One Life game mode is, it also creates some big problems inconsistently across the different matches. Momentum is a huge component to this game. Once your team starts to gather momentum, it's nearly impossible for an enemy team to stop it. While this may sound like a good thing, in many cases it causes full matches to where nothing really happens. After an enemy team is down to about two people, the remainder of the match just comes to a standstill as players look around for each other or capture their remaining points. There have been many games where I've seen where the top players barely have 3 or 4 kills in a full 10 minute game. While it's not the average, it definitely happens a lot more than one would anticipate. Another problem that happens with this mode, along with I'm sure every other objective based mode, is the group of players that never want to capture anything. This problem is heightened in this mode due to the fact that everyone has a single life. Waiting for a respawn while nothing is happening is not a great feeling, but it's worse when you have to spectate someone who is literally doing nothing to help. With that, I wanted to discuss a few things that I thought could make this mode much more enjoyable. Instead of a one life system, which admittedly is a strength, we can consider a wave based respawn system. This would be a limited respawn system that can be made even better by allowing players to speed up the respawn by holding more flags on the enemy team. Not only would this promote more action in the mid to late game, it would also prompt players to push for points in order to keep coming back to life when the enemy team either bleeds out or burns through their remaining spawns. I also think that removing killstreaks is the wise decision in this mode. Only due to the fact that as more players respawn, so will the killstreak spam, and we don't want it to revert back to the normal ground war that we've seen before. To make this game mode really popular, I think they need to strike a balance between meaningful gunfights, action, and objective play. If they can manage to do this, I can see myself playing this game mode way more often than I currently do. 
With that brief review out of the way, I wanted to discuss some loadouts that I have been having success with. It seems that each map in Ground War Reinforced requires a slightly different playstyle. Some maps really favor snipers on rooftops, and some favor close quarter combat with SMGs. So the question is, what can someone use to comfortably engage all targets in each of these maps? So far, one of the best guns that I have used for this mode for mid to long range gunfights is the Kilo 141. This is not really the most damaging assault rifle, but it's definitely one of the most versatile. It allows me to comfortably engage targets at most distances, even to the point where I can challenge snipers that are perched on rooftops. Because of the lack of any type of armor system, the time to kill in this mode is also very short, favoring assault rifles even further. For the close range fights however, the MP5 or the MP7 seem like the best choice. Not only do these two weapons dominate the close range fights, with enough accuracy improving attachments, one could use these comfortably in mid to long range. This gives them an edge over shotguns, which, while amazing at this time, their inability to engage past 15 feet makes them much less useful than an SMG counterpart. And if someone absolutely wants to dominate with a long range gun, I recommend the CAR-98 or the EBR-14. This is due to the fact that the CAR-98 still has that amazing one hit kill potential up to a pretty respectable distance while being faster than most sniper rifles. With these maps feeling smaller than the ground war or war zone maps, the ability to be a little faster is the way to go. The EBR-14 is also fantastic as it allows for a nice quick two hit kill at most distances or even a one shot headshot up to most mid distance gunfights. I suppose one could also use the SKS for this situation, but in my opinion that gun is ugly as sin, so why would anyone do that? As far as a secondary weapon is concerned, I found that the Renetti with the 3 round burst attachment performs amazingly in this mode. I suppose one could also use an RPG or a similar launcher to deal with vehicles, but I found the versatility and ammo pool of the Renetti to be a lifesaver in many situations. It also allows you to move faster with it equipped, which is really nice for being able to cover larger distances a little faster. As far as perks are concerned, Cold Blooded is a great choice. A lot of thermal optics come into play whenever we have these larger maps, and this is no exception. Quick Fix is also pretty good for in between the gunfights, and so is Scavenger if you have ammo problems. Ghost is universally good, but Restock is also great to allow for more tactical grenades that can come in handy, along with the Spotter perk to detect any claymores that people like to put near objectives. Finally, to wrap up this video I wanted to share some tactics that I have found work well regardless of the map one is playing on. In Ground War Reinforced, because each time you take out an enemy, it is on a semi-permanent basis, I found that starting the match with a wide flank really helps bring the numbers to your favor. Once your team starts to get a number advantage, as long as you can prevent a respawn, the momentum of the greater numbers will usually take you forward to an easy win. Another great tactic is to go straight for the back capture on an enemy flag. Not only does this exert pressure on the enemy team, enemies that are returning from mid-map to try to deny that capture can usually be taken care of easily. Not only does this allow your team to do a semi-pincer attack on the enemy, it also lowers their numbers, once again helping your team gain that precious momentum. And that is really all I have to say about this particular mode. Overall, I think it was an amazingly refreshing mode to add into the game. The firefights in these maps feel incredibly diverse due to the fact that the maps are not quite as small as multiplayer, but also not quite as large as Ground War or Warzone. Additionally, the ability to engage in firefights that result in semi-permanent eliminations feels so great. Not only does it cut down on killstreak spam, it also prevents people from running around without a plan. Simultaneously, the ability to potentially respawn also prevents people from camping thinking that it's the only way to win. While not without its weaknesses, such as matches that have nothing going on in them, the action in this mode is phenomenal in my opinion. And that'll be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please do comment, like, and subscribe as it really does help me out. I'm doing my best to bring you all content consistently as I find a way to develop this channel even further. Thank you all for watching. Until next time.